Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 2 of Surrounded by Idiots. My name, of course, is Bill Zam, and I welcome you to the show. Now, I wanted to start out tonight's show by telling you about something that happened to me two nights ago. And that was a vision that I had. Now, a lot of you are going to ask me, or want to ask me, exactly how do I know it was a vision and not just a dream? Well, if you have to ask that question, then you don't know the difference between the two. This is not the first time that this has happened to me, and I'm sure it won't be the last, but this particular vision affected me greatly. And I feel the need, despite my um, uh, immediate embarrassment of telling it in public, telling you about it in public, um, despite that, I feel a great need to tell you, the audience, about it. This particular vision took place in a, uh, a spot that I am actually relatively familiar with. It is, uh, in fact, in um, the city of Ypsilanti, and it is at the corner of Hewitt and Washtenaw Avenue. Hewitt Road and Washtenaw Avenue, very near the um, uh, St. Joe's Mercy Hospital, and um, in an area that uh, I lived in for many, many years. Now, this particular vision, um, it was quite a lengthy one, but I'm going to tell you about one or two particular portions of it. The rest of them are, rest of it is uh, fairly private and uh, seems to concern me alone rather than a lot of other people. And unfortunately, I am the only one that can make that uh, decision on what parts to tell you about. In this vision, um, in order to be able to move around in the building that I was in, you had to climb up and down ladders. And these ladders were on the outsides of the building. To get to uh, the various rooms in the building, you had to go outside the building and you had to go up and down these ladders. Now, at one point during the vision, I realized that where we were, we were moving. Um, not moving physically, but having to relocate, moving from one place to another. And I remember I walked down this hallway, and in this hallway, along the one side of the hallway, was a train, like a subway train. And people were getting on the train. They weren't getting off of the train. They were getting on the train and going somewhere. I got the distinct impression that they were going to meet their destinies. All of these people getting on this, on this train. And at the end of the hallway, I went into the boss's office. Um, the person with the authority in this vision. I uh, went into this office and it was the most remarkable, remarkable room that I've ever been in. It had um, the usual uh, like secretary's desk and a desk for the boss and the boss's desk was a great big oaken desk and in this room there were trees growing and it was um, the trees were like the types of trees that you have in your house, your house plant type of trees, um, like the um, um, fig trees that everybody has, you know, those little um, trees that you can get and they grow up big and they live for many, many years. My mother's had one for probably 20 years now that she keeps trimmed back. But these trees, they were inside. And they were hundreds and hundreds of feet tall. And there were probably 20 or 30 of them, like a little forest of these trees. And when you looked up, it looked like the sky up there. But the person that was in charge, he says to me, it's like a dome, a protective dome over us. And these trees were under the dome. And they were huge trees. They were old trees. They were so big you couldn't get your arms around them. And he had been growing these trees for many, many years. And he told me, he said, come here. And we went over to where he had um, a little, 
like flower garden and in the flower garden were these little seedlings that were coming up and the little seedlings you could tell just by looking at the leaves that they were the same trees they were little tree seedlings and I asked him I said did you take are these from these trees and he says yes they were from the seeds from these trees and he became very sad because he said these seedlings will never grow up they're gonna die and that confused me because they look so healthy and I said no no they'll be okay they will live and this man began crying and he and I should describe him he was um, an elegant man um, wearing a suit and a tie um, gray hair and he emanated a great love and just at that point there was like a rushing sound a rumbling sound and I stood up and I looked along the horizon because it came from the sky from the horizon and on this horizon right where the summertime sun goes down in this particular spot right where, where it goes down where it goes down there was it looked like at first it was the sun and you know how the sun sets and you can you can see the orb of the sun as the sun is setting but this was different this was um, the type of sun that you see um, when it's a um, like a hazy or partly cloudy day where you can actually look at the surface of the sun as it's up in the sky even in a noontime sky you can see that uh, disk up there except this disk was silver it was silvery in color and it was all modeled so that you could like imagine seeing all the sunspots in the sun and this this orb came up like this up over the horizon and you could see it coming up out of the up over the trees and in front of it there were some clouds and when this orb went behind the clouds the clouds were up on their sides they weren't like the normal clouds that you see they were on their sides and a like a tornado began to form in these clouds and this orb began to go all the way around the horizon very quickly it went around the horizon like this and you could see it passing behind clouds and each time it passed behind a cloud that cloud became mottled and started spinning and it went all the way around the horizon like this and and it passed behind another big cloud and that cloud began to spin like it was a tornado turned up on its side and it went all the way across the horizon and as it dipped down below the horizon it became very dark and it began to get extremely windy and the man that was there he said now we have to go into the underground shelter we have to go underground and the last part of the vision was me and him and all of the people that were in this building with us walking down these concrete stairs and I remember seeing fallout shelter sign as I went down these stairs and that is where the vision ended now each time I have had and it's only happened a few times in the past each time I have had um, something that uh, appears to be um, precognitive uh, in other words a glimpse into something that's coming each time it has actually happened believe it or not it has happened sometimes it happens immediately sometimes I am having the vision as the event is occurring and sometimes it takes months days years weeks for it to happen but that is what I experienced two nights ago in uh, in my sleep and I thought it was um, um, interesting enough to tell you the audience about it now I have no idea what it means maybe somebody in the audience can um, may, maybe somebody's got some thoughts and they can go ahead and email me if um, they think they know what might um, what I might have experienced I've got some pretty good ideas but I'm not gonna draw any conclusions from it I from beautiful Celine in southeastern Michigan. Around the world at sunskymysteries.com.
This is the 2009 Top 10 Webcam in the World winner. This is SETV. Well, welcome back. I am, of course, still Bill Zam, believe it or not. Um, what you saw just a minute ago was uh, actually a, another part of our studio. We uh, That's the um, bookcase version of the uh, studio. You can sit in front of the bookcase and look uh, self-important and uh, like you know what you're talking about. At any rate, welcome to the show. Um, we are going to be uh, hitting a few topics tonight besides my uh, retelling of the um, experience that I had two nights ago. Um, our first story tonight, and I thought this was uh, a fairly humorous slash um, um, I could actually see this happening, believe it or not. It is, uh, uh, the title of this is Arrested for producing a chemical in your brain. For real? Yes, it is for real. Let's take a look at the article. It comes to us from uh, Natural News. Uh, that's naturalnews.com. Naturalnews.com. According to federal law, and this is by uh, Mike Adams, the health ranger at that site. Federal law... Every living American can be arrested right now for felony possession of drugs made in their own brains. This is uh, from Monday, February 18th, 2013. If you are reading this, you are guilty of a felony possession of a Schedule One controlled substance. This is not a joke. Like you, everyone else who is alive and breathing can be arrested right now by the United States federal government charged with felony possession, then proven guilty of that possession because you and I, you and I, you possess it and I possess it. We possess this chemical and there's nothing you can do about it. It is, in fact, a felony to possess this particular chemical. Let's uh, look at some more of this. The substance is what is called DMT, or sometimes called the spirit mo molecule, because of its ability to allow humans to transcend states of consciousness. You see how this story sort of ties in with my uh, uh, experience that I had a couple of nights ago, the vision that I had. That's what we call in the uh, entertainment business a segue. At any rate, uh, according to U.S. Federal Code, it defines it defines um, it defines a Schedule One drug as unless specifically accepted or unless listed in another schedule, any material, compound, mixture preparation which contains any quantity of the following hallucinogenic substances and here is the list of substances and of course the substance that is created in your brain is listed right here right there DMT your brain produces it but that's not all Let's see, you are a criminal drug manufacturer. Now, what's the big deal about this, you say? Well, for starters, DMT is manufactured in your own brain. Scientific American explains it as this. DMT is the only psychedelic known to occur naturally in the human body. In 1972, Nobel laureate Julius Axelrod of the National Institutes of Health discovered DMT in human brain tissue. Under existing federal law, you not only possess a Schedule One controlled substance, you actually manufacture it. Now, it gets even crazier. It turns out that not only do you manufacture DMT in your brain, you also cultivate this drug in your yard because your common 
grass has DMT in it. So you are actually growing DMT in your yard if you have a lawn. If you think the government arresting people for growing home gardens on their lawn is bad, just wait until the DEA starts conducting armed drug raids on homeowners with nice lawns. Freeze, you're under arrest for felony drug possession. But, but, but I was just mowing my lawn. You mean your DMT factory, you slave scum? DMT, a neurochemical similar to serotonin, is also manufactured in the brains of cats and other animals. This means that if you breed cats and sell them, you are a drug dealer under U.S. law. Now, wait a minute. My cats actually have this psychedelic drug in their brains? That explains a lot of behavior around here. Let me tell you that. All chemicals in existence are made of the same stuff. Elements like hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, carbon, nitrogen, and so on. Drug control laws state that a certain arrangement of these elements into a molecule make that molecule criminal. An illegal molecule, however, may have all the same elements of a legal molecule just strung together in a different pattern. And this article has a couple of examples. Here is um, serotonin. Here is the um, chemical of the molecule of serotonin. Hold on, let me make that smaller so that you can actually see it. Okay, here is serotonin. And you can see how the molecule is arranged. And here is DMT, which actually has most of the same molecules. It is, in fact, pretty much the same thing. Hold on, let me, there we go. You can see the one there, and you can see the DMT molecule right there. Note that both of these molecules are very similar and actually made of the same basic stuff. The only difference is the arrangement of the molecular bonds. The order and arrangement of the elements is what makes them illegal. And this brings up a very important legal argument. Can anyone really criminalize the arrangement of elements which are considered individually perfectly legal. In other words, if nitrogen, hydrogen, and carbon are considered legal, how can it be criminal to merely arrange them in a certain formation? In addition to the legal issues stated above, intellectual property patent laws state that certain arrangements of elements are the monopoly property of corporations such as drug companies. Under patent laws, arranging nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon, and other elements into a particular structure makes you a thief. And there you go. That is um, how you and I, and everybody you know, including your cats, which, I repeat, um, makes it very, uh, explains a lot about cats and why they act so like they're on drugs all the time because they are. It probably explains why a lot of people that uh, you and I both know uh, um, makes it seem like they're on drugs. Maybe they produce more DMT in their body than other people do. We know that uh, serotonin is like that. More people, some people produce more serotonin than other people do. Now, let's get back to our second story. Actually, not get back to it. Let's just look at our second story. Uh, the daily infatuation with fireballs and meteors beating us about the head, here is a good resource for seeing them in real time. Here is a website right here, and uh, of course there are no 
meteors to look at right now. This comes from Meteorscan.com. Meteorscan.com. This is uh, Meteor Detection and Radio Astronomy. Um, we'll go ahead and just um, stay on this page for a few minutes. What they do is they take... Um, here, we'll go ahead and take a look at the entire network. There is uh, an entire network of um, this me these meteor detection detections around the world. You can see that uh, right here, this particular one has detected a meteor, and that is what it looks like when it hits the atmosphere. Once it is uh, um, on this graph right here, and I am attempting to get rid of the um, little circle that I just drew, and there it goes right there. And you can see they have uh, various uh, locations where the um, where they are detecting the radio signals from the meteors. In fact, uh, right there, you just saw another one pop up right there. And if we go back to the main screen, I'm well, yep, there they are. That is, uh, let me close that one right there. That is. Um, what a meteor looks like when it hits the atmosphere when it is um, shown graphically. And if you um, go to the web page, meteorscan.com, and um, take a look at the uh, little uh, key that they have down at the bottom, you'll be able to see what the differences are between a small meteor and a large meteor. The one that you see on the screen right now is uh, yeah, its not a really big meteor. It's just a fair-sized one. We'll come back to that later and uh, take a look at it. That's Meteorscan.com. And down here at the bottom, incidentally, for those of you that are interested um, regarding the uh, recent meteors that we have had and whether or not they are related to anything, Here's your meteor showers for 2013. You notice that uh, we are not in any um, uh, meteor activity streams right now. We're not running through any known um, debris field of uh, meteors or rocks out in space. So it's very interesting that uh, we are, in fact, having all of these different um, different um, large meteors and uh, fireballs that are being reported. In fact, you can see right here on the screen, there is um, an entire series of them that has uh, come into view over just the past few minutes since I have been talking about this. There's, any, uh, there's the first one that we were talking about, and here is another one that's fairly large. And you can see they just like basically go up the chart there, so this uh, refreshes by itself. So. I thought that was interesting. You might want to go and check that out, meteorscan.com. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you consider yourself to be a slave? More specifically, a slave of the system. A lot of people do. Um, at times, I have to admit that I um, become very distressed that uh, we're just slaves of the system. There's seemingly no way out of the lives that we are in. Our friends over at um, Above Top Secret, AboveTopSecret.com, there is currently a um, rather interesting thread that is going on called I Quit the Forced Slavery of America. The Forced Slavery of America. It is, uh, I have found it to be a quite an interesting discussion that they are having over there. And um, the article goes like this. Uh, do you consider yourself as some sort of slave? Do you even know what the word means? We all think we know what the word means, but the dictionary um, says that the word slave means this. Slavery is a system under which people are treated as property to be bought and sold, like professional sports stars, and are forced to work. Slaves can be held against their will from the time of their capture, purchase, or birth and deprived of the right to leave, to refuse to work, or demand compensation. Does that sound like your life? Does that sound like our lives, uh, even philosophically? If you extend that... Uh, that definition uh, philosophically 
Does that uh, sound anything like the lives that we live? There is um, this, like I said, this thread comes from above top secret. Now, I have mentioned this before, but uh, there is a book that is called Giant's Star. It, uh, it's actually an entire series of books. It was uh, published in the 1990s. And if you go over to um, ussamichigan.com, you will see the show notes from tonight's show, as well as the um, podcast. You can hear the podcast. And there are uh, plenty of links, including uh, a link to um, the book Giant's Star over on Amazon.com. The book, um, one of the lead characters in the book, at one point, laments about how, about, and the lead character laments how, um, how much, how it matters, doesn't matter how much technology grows. The basic person's wages grow just enough to keep the lifestyle the same or get even just a little bit worse. And we all know about the cycles in our society. You have good times, you have bad times, and lately they seem to be coming more and more often closer together. All through history, it's been the same generation after generation. In the book, the author writes about an, another character. And this is the quote from the book. Strollers in open neck shirts and summery dresses, making the best of the first warm days of the year, added a dash of color to the surrounding greenery, topped by the distant frontages of, of dignified and imposing buildings that had not changed appreciably in 50 years. All that the people in the world ever wanted was to live their lives, pay their way, and be left alone. So how would the few with different aspirations, always been able to command the power to impose themselves and their systems. That was all they had ever wanted, he thought to himself, as he took in the sights and sounds around him. While that's interesting in itself, the same paragraph continues. Which was the greater evil? One fanatic with a cause, or a hundred men free enough not to care about causes? But caring about freedom enough to defend it made it a cause and its defenders fanatics. And that, ladies and gentlemen, pretty much sums it all up in a nutshell. Because we have, as a, as a society, allowed everything in our system to get so out of whack that believing that freedom is something worthwhile to defend has become the fanatics in this country. All in all, I, Bill Zam, I find that point of view to be unacceptable. But getting back to the above top secret dot com thread, the poster makes the point that so how are we slaves? We are not property to be bought or sold. We aren't forced to work. As Americans we cannot be held against our will and we certainly aren't captured or born into slavery. Or are we? Ironically the very same reason why we have such high Unemployment in this country is the very same reason that forced that employment down our throats to begin with. Big government, red tape, useless laws that do nothing but force those with great ideas to literally sell their soul and every worldly possession with it to make their dream a reality. Or, could you simply work for an already established company that will f treat you like crap for 40 years until you retire at 80? unable to walk, and most times without a dime to your name. That is, if your master doesn't fire you first, which do most people choose? The point I'm trying to make here is that we are literally forced to work, and if you cannot work, you end up on the street, and you are literally thrown in shackles. But people have been working forever. How can I say that working is a form of slavery? Only in America can it be consi considered normal to put yourself into hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt at 18 years of age simply to continue an education that, for the most part, wasn't needed in most fields 50 years ago. And that is because the educational system in this country has failed us. It has failed you, and it has failed 
me. Not personally, though. I went to school decades and decades ago. So I graduated school with a very good education. The kids today, even though it seems like they're very smart, are getting their brains filled with mush. Which, of course, another convenient segue is another article that I found that is at Natural Society. Let's take a look at this particular article. This is at naturalsociety.com. That's naturalsociety.com. And uh, this particular article is written by a fellow by the name of Mike Barrett. And this comes from February 17th of 2013. And would you be surprised to hear that the human race is slowly becoming dumber and dumber? Despite our advancements over the tens, last tens or even hundreds of years, some experts believe that humans are losing cognitive capabilities and becoming more emotionally unstable. You think? One Stanford University researcher and geneticist, Dr. Gerald Crabtree, believes that our intellectual decline as a race has much to do with adverse genetic mutations. But there is more to it than that. You see, half of this crap is the absolute fact that we are filling our children's brains with crap-assed garbage. Useless pap, if you prefer, brainwashing our children the next generation. Now here's what Crabtree says. I would wager that an average citizen from Athens of a thousand BC were to appear suddenly among us, he or she would be, um, would, would be among the brightest and most intellectually alive of our colleagues and companions with a good memory, a broad range of ideas, and a clear-sighted view of important issues. Furthermore, I would guess that he or she would be among the most emotionally stable of our friends and colleagues. The genet geneticist began his article in the scientific journal Trends in Genetics. Well, I would say that that is very remarkable because apparently Mr. Crabtree, Dr. Crabtree, has somehow been able to go back in time and actually have a conversation with a average Athenian citizen. There's no way to know that. The only thing we have is their writings and histories and things like that. You don't know how the hell or the average citizen back then left, lived, or how smart they were, or how balanced their lives were, or anything else. Don't forget the Romans were poisoning themselves with uh, lead cups, and uh, all of the wars and crap like that that they were having back then, and you think that we're more emotionally unstable? When you they were pitting people against people just for uh, the, uh, the, the land they were on, or because they wanted to control that society? I mean, come on. You can't tell me that hum humanity has changed that much. I, for one, refuse to believe it. Unless you can bring an Athenian right here in the studio so I can have a conversation with them, then we'll find out. Of course, they won't be able to speak English, so we won't be able to talk. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot. They're so smart and intelligent, they'll somehow just be able to pick up English through ob osmosis and be able to understand everything that I'm saying because they're so well balanced. Give me a freaking break. The article goes on and on with the usual advice about all the usual suspects of fluoride, pesticides, corn syrup, and the like causing humans to become stupider than a screen door in a submarine. I would submit, however, ladies and gentlemen, that there are other items that are making humans dumber, stupider, and dumber than what we eat or drink. How about this? As seen on Drudge, we give you 21 signs that the United States public schools have become a training center for sexual deviancy. deviancy. This comes from TheAmericanDream.com. End of TheAmericanDream.com. End of TheAmericanDream.com. 
And this was submitted by somebody by the name of Michael on February 17, 2013. Why do men and women have such a hard time relating to each other in a meaningful way in America today? Could our oversexed culture have anything to do with it? In the United States today, we are constantly being bombarded with sexual messages. Just think about it. Did you watch the Super Bowl a few weeks ago? Most of the commercials were about sex on some level, and the halftime show featuring Beyonce might as well have been a strip club act. In America today, all of this is considered to be normal. We literally worship sex, and we can never get enough of it. There are 20 million new sexually transmitted infections in the United States each year, and we have the highest teen pregnancy rate on the planet. Now let's take a look at some of these 21 signs that United States public schools have become training centers for sexual deviancy. Number one, this is a raging epidemic of, there is a raging epidemic of sexually transmitted diseases among our young people. There are 20 million sexually transmitted infections in the United States and Americans between the ages of 15 and 24 account for a full 50 percent of those infections. Many of our teens are catching diseases that they can't even pronounce. There are more than 1.4 million cases of chlamydia reported in the United States in 2011. An astounding 33 percent of those cases were Americans younger than 20 years of age. At this point, one out of every four teen girls in the U.S. has at least one sexual disease. Apparently, all of the propaganda, number four, apparently all of the propaganda about safe sex is not working very well. According to one survey, 24% of all U.S. teens have had unprotected sex that have an STD say they still have unprotected sex, passing it right along. When you take morality out of public life, the results are predictable. In the United States today, 47% of all high school students have had sex. Number six, many of our young people seem not to understand the value of waiting until marriage to become a mother. Number seven, when I was growing up, I don't remember a single girl being pregnant in our high school. A couple of years ago, it was reported in Memphis, Tennessee, that 86 girls in one school were pregnant. If you can believe it, the United States has the highest teen rate pregnancy on the entire planet. Increasingly, oral sex is being performed, being promoted to our young people as a safer form of sex. Number 10, sex edu education has become more about indoctrination in recent years. Number 11, sexual experimentation among our teens has reached heights as never before. Um, let me key, let me see here. Um, sexual contact between teen girls at the, is at the highest rate ever. Number 12, in America today, sex in public school hallways has become a common occurrence. This actually is very common, according to this article, in a high school in Detroit. Number 13, would you feel okay about your teenage girl sharing a bathroom with boys? In the state of Massachusetts, boys will now be able to freely use restroom girls' restrooms if it makes them feel more comfortable. Number 14, one of the results of our culture of sex has been an explosion of the number of babies being born outside of marriage. Number 15, being a single parent is incredibly hard, but more children in the United States are being raised by one parent than ever before. More than one out of every four children in the United States is being raised by a single parent. Number 16, thanks to our sexual revolution, men and women are having a harder time than ever relating to each other in a meaningful way. Number 17, there is an epidemic of sex between teachers and students. Number 18, a former high school English teacher down in Texas 
has been accused of having sex with five different students. And this this list goes on and on. I won't even give you all 21 of them. We only got up to number 18. There are more after that. And it is more in-depth than what I was telling you, as you could see from uh, reading along with me on the screen. It is... Um, it is, in fact, the lead vessel of our modern age, Rome. And, as such, hang on, one of our servers is going cattywampus. I don't know why it seems to uh, want to keep doing what it is doing. Maybe somebody on my staff can take a look at this tomorrow. That would be uh, very appreciative. At any rate, that is it for tonight's episode of Surrounded by Idiots. And as a test of my uh, vocal emanation capability, it has, uh, I have apparently have passed with flying colors this time, 30 minutes, and my voice is not hoarse. So, baby, I'm back. Bill Zam is back in the saddle for season three of Surrounded by Idiots. Remember, if you watched the show this far, I have to make some shameless plugs. You can go to uh, the home page that we have set up. Um, you can get to it by uh, going to, oh, let me see, you can go to um, um, Celine etv.com Celine etv.com that is our news site where you can find news stories as well as a an immense aggregation of different news stories from around the world and around the web every day and you can get to our homepage in fact let me show you that page right now before we go let me close out a few tabs here in the old browser and um, click this and we will go to our home page that we have set up for everybody as soon as the uh, internet decides to cooperate with me um, and I believe it is coming up now I'll just make a small talk until it actually does come up so that uh, you guys can see it. This is, uh, you see my director right now, he's going like this. In the um, broadcasting industry, going like this means stretch it out. You're just like gonna talk about um, uh, nothing. At any rate, let's go over to Celine ETV now that it has uh, completely loaded. This is what the website looks like. And um, we uh, have all different types of uh, news stories and everything. We have your um, uh, hand-picked daily headlines over here in this right-hand column and um, down here you can see we have different categories of news our original uh, our original articles mainstream news and conspiracy news from different uh, websites around the internet and also you can go over by um, clicking on uh, one of our links which is right up here you can go to the public home page that we have set up which is right here you can get to just about any website that you want to anywhere on the internet by going here you can see all of these different uh, ones here we have all different types of websites that you can go to and um, we have uh, Realist News, Fox News, CNN, all the different types of uh, weather sites that you can go to that will tell you about space weather, regular weather, uh, United States weather. We have uh, an interactive um, an interactive map that is uh, put out by the uh, National Weather Service. I'll go ahead and show that to you before we leave here so that you can see this. This is probably one of the best weather websites in existence on the planet and you have to go to our home page in order to be able to get to it and to see it it's uh don't forget selenetv.com and uh click go to examistan now if you look on this website you can see oh well, wait a minute here 
There we go, United States. Now, if you look over here on the left side of this website right here, there are different layers on this um, animation that you can turn on. For instance, you can turn on the weather radar around the United States. Look at that, all the different radars, and you can um, play it. This is uh, just like what you would see on um, the Weather Channel or something like that. See, you can see that and you can zoom in on it. Let's uh, take a look. I'll look down here towards Arkansas. Here's those big, big storms that uh, you've been hearing about that are going to affect the uh, southeast of the United States. And there is all of your different radars, all mosaic together, courtesy of the National Weather Service. Look at that. And then you can turn that off and you can turn on the satellite view. So you can see what the satellite view looks like and you can see that there is a line of uh, freezing rain on there. Don't I do it? Uh, you can tell by the pink there. That's uh, that there. And um, let me see what else can you look at. You can look at your uh, observations right here. We can look at the observations right here. And you can um, fix it so that you can see as many as possible and those here are the observations you can see the uh, temperatures and everything right there so you can turn that off you can turn on the upper air and it'll uh, come up pop up here in a minute you can see that uh, there's uh, one upper air report right here at that weather station in Jacksonville and um, let me see here they can uh, load up different web weather webcams from uh, around everywhere so you can uh, just click on a webcam which is uh, everybody's favorite and uh, take a look at uh, what's going on uh, in real time in different places so there you go that is um, the uh, weather site that uh, you can get to that's uh, linked up at uh, Zamistan and you can get to that by going to selenetv.com and of course the show archives will be available at USSA Michigan Dot com. So until the next time, my name is Bill Zam. Thank you for uh, stopping by and putting up with my ruminations for the evening.